Hi, this is Jonathan Gardner. We're into uh, section 5.3 of Griffith's Introduction to Electrodynamics. Uh, this first part we're going to investigate straight line currents, uh, infinite straight line currents, which we did for example 5 uh, in the previous section. So um, the, the divergence and curl of B, so um, the, the first example here is going to help us understand well, first of all, if you, if you look straight on down that wire, so you're looking, so here's the wire, and you're looking straight down that wire, okay? So the current is flowing basically straight at, straight at you, okay? And if you calculated the B vector, let's draw like field lines for this, right? So it's going to basically wrap around, and as you get further out, it's going to get weaker. Okay, and it's a perfect circle centered on the um, the current which I didn't draw of course but just imagine these circles are centered on that that gives you a good visual of the um, B vector well what's the magnitude of B well the magnitude of B only depends on how far away from that current you are it is basically mu naught I over uh, 2 pi R am I correct yes I am okay so let's calculate well, looking at this at a glance, it should be pretty obvious that, you know, by visual inspection, that the divergence of B is zero, and the curl of the B vector is something important. Okay. So depending on where you take the curl, but uh, for circles, let's draw circles around this uh, with our integral. So we're going to do the closed path integral of a circle. Okay, of the B vector dot dl vector. Okay, so we're marching along in a circle and we're taking every point of the way. We're going to take the B vector, dot it with the current line segment, so see how much aligned they are. Okay, and we're going to add that all up and see what we get. Okay, well, for our circle, uh, the B vector is constant, it doesn't change at all. It's equal to the radius of the circle, R, dl. Okay, they're pointing in the same direction. We don't have to do any cosine thetas or anything like that. So we take out that, because it's constant, and the closed loop circle across DL of a circle of radius R is just 2 pi R. So these two cancel, and you get mu naught I, okay? So the integral along the circle of B vector dot DL vector is mu naught I, okay? And we just calculated that for circles. The question is, does this work for other shapes? Um, and what happens when we draw a shape that doesn't enclose that current? Are we going to get the same answer or something different? So let's use cylindrical coordinates. We're going to use uh, R, phi, and Z. So R is the distance from the center point. Right? We're going to put this on the origin. Phi is the angle starting at here, 0, um, pi, 3 pi over 2 and back to 0, so you can loop around as many times as you want with phi, and z being how far out of the page you are, okay? So now we can take any path, okay? The b vector in cylindrical coordinates is always going to be z, u naught i over 2 pi and whatever r coordinate you're at, and the direction it's going to point is in the phi hat direction, okay? It's always going to point wherever, whatever would happen as you increase phi, it's going to point in the same direction. Okay, so over here as you increase phi it goes straight up, over here it goes a little bit in an angle this way, over here it goes straight left, over here straight down, over there straight right. So whatever happens in the phi direction, uh, if you increase phi, that's going to be your b. Okay, so let's calculate in the general case, so integral of b vector dot dl vector is equal to uh, mu naught i, this comes out, over 2 pi, and this is the integral, the closed lap integral in cylindrical coordinates of this 1 over r part times the dl in cylindrical coordinates, which is r d phi. Okay? And simplifying that, so we get mu naught i over 2 pi. Well, this is uh, two integrals. One is the 1 over r. No, it's one integral. Uh, well, the r's cancel, basically. Boop, boop. So you get um, d phi. And what is the integral d phi? That's just 2 pi. Integral uh, d phi, I'm sorry, is just 2 pi. So the answer is mu naught i. Okay? Um, the only when, 
your fee starts here, goes all the way around, and comes back. Okay, so if if you loop around the origin, um, you're going to get the answer of mu not, mu not i. But what happens if you don't loop around the origin? Okay, so let's say you you take a funny loop like this. Okay, so you go loop loop loop. Okay, so we already calculated what happens if you go around and include the origin. You get mu not, mu not i. Okay, well over here you start at this point, you go up to this point, and you go back down to that point. So your mu your 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 fees range from some value to some value and then back to the original value. So your integral is going to be equal to, well mu naught i over 2 pi, which isn't going to be important in a second, you'll see here, of phi evaluated between the original phi and the other phi. Okay? And if you start and end at the same phi, what's that going to be? Phi minus phi. Okay? equals zero. Okay? Whereas here, your phi... Um, hold on a second, let me get this exactly right. Ah. Here your phi... Um, I'm at a loss for words right now. The bottom line is when you go around the origin, with your fees, then you're going to um, the integral is not you know phi at zero minus phi of zero. It's summing up all of these different parts. But here, you know, it's just you're adding up here and then you're subtracting because you're going back. Okay, so it's zero. Okay, um, so we have this general rule now that the closed path integral of b vector dot dl is equal to mu naught times the uh, current enclosed. Okay, and if you think about it, if we had like a weird universe where we had, you know, currents flying all over the place, uh, sometimes in opposite directions, um, you can use the principle of superposition because you know our um, v vectors follow the principle of superposition. And if you draw any loop that encloses any of these currents, like this one would have a integral b dot dl of zero. This one would be the total of the currents going through once for this one, once for that one. And this one was the same way, only for that one though. It, it, you know, much like the Gauss's law for electro, electrostatics, um, here we have like a law for uh, currents that the current enclosed uh, gives you that based on the, the path. Well, what's the current enclosed? That can be calculated um, so I enclosed can be calculated as the integral over some volume or over some area, right, of the volume current that passes through that uh, area perpendicular to it. Now we have um, let's do this way. So now we have the closed integral b vector dot dl vector is equal to mu naught the integral of j vector dot dA vector, right? Well, let's apply Stokes' theorem to this left side. That says that this integral is the same as this integral. Uh, the curl of B, I'm sorry. The curl of B uh, dot dA. So you take the surface that's bounded by this loop and you take the curl of B in all different points and you dot that with the A vector of that surface. Doesn't matter which surface you choose, you're going to get the same answer according to Stokes' theorem. That's equal to mu naught integral J vector dot the A vector. Okay? Which tells us that this and that must be equal. So we have the curl of B, general rule here, is mu naught J vector. Okay? And that is a result that is really cool. Remember the divergence of the electric field was the charge enclosed, or the, the charge at the point? Well here we have the curl of the B vector is the volume current at that point. Um, this is not a comprehensive solution that is going to withstand every possible case you can imagine. This only works for infinite uh, currents, which you know in reality um, when you're dealing at small enough scales uh, any significant length of wire looks infinite. But this is not a formal deriva derivation, starting with Beal Savar law to a general rule that the curl of B is always equal to the um, 
the the uh, volume current uh, at each point. Okay, that's for next section. Thanks for your time. Uh, we're going to cover the exhaustive derivation in the next section. Take care and goodbye.